The H2S, Bamboo Lab's newest 3D printer, has just been released. And in basic terms, it's a more budget-friendly H2D. But did they remove too many key features in an effort to get the price down? In this video, I'll be quickly running you through all of the headline features with the H2S and explaining exactly what's been removed and whether they've gone too far. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. The new H2S does look very similar to the H2D that Bamboo Lab released about five months previous. And the two models do share probably over 90% of the same hardware. And with the door closed, they look pretty much identical. However, there are some quite significant differences that are not immediately apparent. So stick with me and I'll make sure to cover everything that's important as quickly as possible. Also, if you're wondering why I'm not outright telling you the price of the H2S, it's because particularly in today's economic climate, prices can vary quite a bit depending where you live or even what day of the week it is. The best thing to do is click on the links in the description, which will take you to the best price for you right now. The first big difference that you'll want to know about is that the H2S only has one hot end, not two like the H2D. What this means in real terms is that you get a couple of disadvantages compared to the more expensive model, but one big advantage too. What you can't do with only one nozzle is switch between two very different types of filament in one print. What I mean by this is that with the H2D, you can have one nozzle loaded with a filament that either uses a drastically different nozzle temperature, or it could be a filament like TPU that doesn't like being pushed and pulled through feed tubes, which makes it unsuitable for automatic material switching. Because the H2D can swap to a different hot end, you don't have to worry about clogs and tangles when using these awkward filaments in conjunction with other filaments that can run through the other nozzle. Whilst I have tested this out many times over the past few months with my H2D, there aren't many instances where dual nozzles are essential unless you have a very specific use case. The other thing that dual hot ends gives you is a filament change without a poop creating purge every time you want to switch to a different color or material. This is only applicable with two filaments though, any more and you're back to poop producing purges. So every filament change on the H2S will create some waste, but perhaps the only real downside is that there'll be some more advanced combinations of materials that won't be possible within one print. The main advantage of the single hot end, however, is that you can use the full bed area for printing. With the H2D's dual hot end setup, the right hot end can't reach the left side of the bed and vice versa. So technically, the H2S has a bigger build volume than the H2D without increasing the overall dimensions. And before we move on, just a quick thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. If you need custom parts made, PCBWay can help with way more than just circuit boards. They now offer CNC machining, 3D printing, injection molding, sheet metal fabrication, and of course their well-known PCB prototyping and assembly services. So whether you're a hobbyist looking to get a one-off part made, or you need small batch production runs like gears, enclosures, or brackets, PCBWay has the equipment and expertise to deliver professional quality results. Check out pcbway.com using the link below if you want to see what they can do for your next project. The H2S's print head is a completely new design and not just the same as some of Bamboo Lab's other models like the A1 and A1 Mini, even though it has a similar look. Just like its brother, the H2S uses a servo motor extruder, which means that not only can you push the filament through with more force, it provides constant feedback to help detect clogs and other extrusion issues. Whilst there's no nozzle camera on the H2S, it does have all of the other AI sensors that ensure these H2 printers can catch print errors before they cause you any headaches. It's easy to brush over this, but compared to what some of the other manufacturers are doing, these Bamboo Lab machines are leagues ahead in this area, and knowing that the H2S has pretty much all of the same capability in this area is a massive plus. There are some other minor differences between the two models, like a different filament wiper, but nothing that makes any difference to your actual printing experience. What this means is that the H2S could be the perfect printer for many more people than the H2D. Let's face it, all of the gadgets are fun, but how often do they get used? Stripping away one of the pricier ones has enabled Bamboo Lab to reduce the price and make the H2S a more attractive option for a much larger group of people. So if for some strange reason you don't have all of the H2D specification etched into your mind, let's quickly go over all of the great features the H2 printers now share. For me, one of the best features of these printers is the heated and cooled print chamber. 
The temperature of the air around your print can be a big deciding factor between print success and failure. Whether it's heating the air for engineering filaments like nylon or polycarbonate, or cooling it for PLA, the H2s ensure that whatever the temperature outside, your print is formed in the best possible environment. They do this with not only a heater, but by using intake and outtake vents that open and close when needed to make any changes. I could drone on about how good all of these different features are, but then we'll be getting into long review territory, and that's not what we're doing here. I should say that Bamboo Labs sent me this printer to try out. I didn't buy it, but they have no control over what I say in any content I make with it, blah, blah, blah. Not only is the air around your print heated and cooled, anything that is vented out of the chamber is filtered too. I've really noticed this when printing with ABS, which is a horrible filament to be around when it's printing, and without an enclosure, I never stay in the same room as it gives me headaches. There is still a slight smell when printing with ABS on a H2, but nowhere near the level of when it's unfiltered and I've been able to stay in the room with no headaches at all. As I already said, the H2S's build volume is bigger than the H2D and therefore makes it the biggest printer in the Bamboo Lab range at this stage. It also makes it pretty much the biggest enclosed off-the-shelf printer available today. So if you want to print big, and control the print environment, you aren't really going to find anything better without building it yourself. Just like the H2D, the H2S isn't limited to just 3D printing. It supports the same modular attachments, so you can swap out the print head for things like a blade cutter or a pen plotter. That gives you the option of working with vinyl, thin sheet materials, or even turning the machine into a large format drawing tool. The only exception is the 40 watt laser. The H2S does still support the standard 10 watt laser module, but the higher powered 40 watt version is not compatible. So if serious laser cutting was on your wish list, you'll need the H2D. For most people though, the loss of the 40 watt option won't really matter. You still get all of the other add-on flexibility. This isn't something I have any experience with though, as I only have the 3D printing only versions of both H2s. So I can't really comment any more on the add-ons. Just like the H2D, the H2S is fully compatible with the AMS2 Pro filament system. This isn't just a fancy spool holder, it's also a built-in filament dryer with smart vending, automatic spool rotation, and live humidity readings. For most people, this makes multi-material printing a lot less hassle, because your filament stays dry and ready to go without constant micromanagement. If you want to go even further, the H2S also supports the AMS HD for high temperature materials. This lets you dry spools at up to 85 degrees C, making it a genuinely future-proof setup for when you decide to take on trickier engineering filaments down the line. And it's not just about drying. With the high temperature hardware, a 350 degrees C hot end, 120 degrees C bed, and a chamber that heats to 65 degrees, the H2S can handle a whole range of advanced materials like nylon, ABS, ASA, polycarbonate, and more. That puts it firmly in the serious printing category, not just a big PLA box. Even with a single hot end, you can still load up multiple filaments through the AMS. Bamboo Studio software automatically manages how they're used, minimizing waste and saving time. Yes, there will be purges when switching, but the system does a solid job of optimizing when and how they happen. So to sum it up, the H2S ditches the dual hot end setup of the H2D, but in exchange, you get the largest build volume of any Bamboo Lab printer so far, plus a more attractive price. You still get the same heated, cooled and filtered chamber, the servo driven extruder with feedback and the AI monitoring features that make the H2 series stand out. You also get full support for the AMS2 Pro and even the AMS HT, making it one of the most capable enclosed printers available off the shelf today. For most people, the H2S is probably the sweet spot. You give up a little exotic dual material flexibility, but gain the biggest build volume, a simpler tool head, and a lower price that makes it far more accessible. I'll be putting this machine through its paces over the coming weeks, so if you want to see real-world results, comparisons, and honest feedback, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss those videos. And if you want to check the current price of the H2S in your area, or any Bamboo Lab 3D printer, I've put affiliate links down in the description. Clicking through those links helps support the channel at no extra cost to you, and it really does make a huge difference in letting me keep producing these videos. That's it for now. 
drop your questions about the H2S in the comments and I'll try and cover them in future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.